please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
In holy baptism, Mike was clothed with the robe of Christ's righteousness that covered all his sin. St. Paul says, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Mike and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading is from Job chapter 19. Oh, that my words were written. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and lead they were engraved in the rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives, and at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been thus destroyed, yet in my flesh I shall see God whom I shall see for myself, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. My heart faints within me. This is the word of the Lord. These are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Now if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is in vain and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God because we testified about God that he raised Christ whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile, and you are still in your sins. Then those who also, those also who have fallen asleep in Christ, have perished. If in this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. For as by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. This is the word of the Lord. 
Please stand. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus Christ is the firstborn of the dead. To him be glory and power forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been dead in the tomb four days. Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles off, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them concerning their brother. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, but Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
The word of God to which we direct our attention was chosen by Mike himself for this day. Two, pass, two verses from the passage in John chapter 11 where Jesus reassures his friends, and that would mean all of us, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. In the name of Christ, dear Christian friends, God created us as social beings. We need to be around other people. We desire companionship and relationships. Granted, there are times when we just want a little time to ourselves. we want to be alone, but we don't like it to remain that way. In law enforcement terms, every once in a while, there is the use of solitary confinement. But none of us would choose that for ourselves, at least not for an extended period of time. We would feel starved after a while for meaningful human interaction. God put us in families. He gave us friends. He puts us in the Holy Christian Church where we have the support and companionship and fellowship of brothers and sisters in Christ. And most of all, he gave us himself. We want people to come and be with us. We visit them, they visit us. We want them to stay, we desire their presence. To use an older term, we say, Abide with us. Stay for a while. In a sense, that's the theme of the service today. That's the plea and the prayer we make to God in every stanza of that beloved hymn, beloved to Mike and beloved to many others through the centuries. O oh Lord, abide with me. And he does. How we wished, how we wished that Mike could have abided with us for a while longer. He was a meaningful part of his family and his community and this congregation. We could still use his presence and his leadership and his influence. Why couldn't he abide with us? any longer. If it weren't for the ravages of cancer, it wouldn't be inconceivable to think that he could have abided with us for another 10 years, maybe even 20 perhaps. But of course, that's not what God had planned. And God's plan is always right. He abides with us in life and death. His timing is right. The sisters in Bethany, Mary and Martha, thought Jesus was a little late. They would have liked his abiding presence four days earlier, before their brother died. But the Lord came and he raised their brother Lazarus back to life and gave all of us an important lesson about life and death and what he, Jesus, does for us. Simply put, he abides with us. That's why he comes. He abides with us in life and in death. And as we come together today to thank God for the life of Mike Green and to thank God for his blessings to our dear Mike, we take comfort in the words of our Savior that were so meaningful to Mike. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Our Savior abides with us in life and in death. And let us dwell just a few moments on the fact that his abiding in life and death is first of all undeserved 
And secondly, it's unending. It's undeserved. What made Jesus go that distance to be at Bethany with Mary and Martha and his friend Lazarus, who had already been in the grave for four days? What made him do it? The simple answer is, he loved them. They were his friends. And he says in the Bible that we are as well. You are my friends. That's why he abides with us. And the remarkable thing is he abides with us when we don't deserve it. Really, that's the truth. That's the message of God's word. All of us have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We do not always abide. That's another sense, a use of the word. We don't always abide by God's direction for our life, his holy law. We sin against him. We go our own way. We sometimes forget about him. But the remarkable thing is he never returns the same to us. He never forgets about us. He never ceases to love us. That's the kind of savior we have. He shows us his undeserved love. That, after all, is the definition of grace, isn't it? God's undeserved love in Christ. So we sang the hymn, Abide With Me, today. We're not quite done. There's three more stanzas. We talked about this, Marcia. And this was a good way to do it. We used all eight of the original stanzas. That's the way the original hymn writer penned it. Most hymnals today only have six of the eight stanzas. The two we just sang before the sermon are the two that are usually omitted. But we sang them today. Mike got the whole works of Abide With Me. And that first of those two stanzas says, thou on, my youth, thou on my head in early youth did smile, and though rebellious and perverse meanwhile, thou hast not left me oft as I left thee, on to the close, O Lord, abide with me. I didn't serve on the hymnal committee, but I wonder if it just could be that those words are too strong. That's why people don't sing them so much today. Those words are too strong for us in the world today. Rebellious and perverse? Come on. That's not me. Well, it really is. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us have turned to his own way. That's the truth. That's why we have funerals. That's why people die. The wages of sin is death. If we weren't sinners, we wouldn't die. And if we weren't sinners, we wouldn't need a savior. But we do have a savior because we are sinners. And again, it comes back to grace. God's abiding in life and death is undeserved. So I could stand here and talk a lot about Mike, but he wouldn't want that. He was a man of men, a prince of men, that's for sure. He served his country and he suffered for it. Long lasting health effects. He served his community. He served this church. He's part of the reason I'm here. He signed the papers 16 years ago when I moved here from Maryland. He served here at Holy Cross, prior to that at St. Paul's. There's one word we could use to sum up his life. It would be servant. But you know, everything Mike did, did not earn him a place in heaven. Because our salvation is not a matter of what we do for God. It's a matter of what God does for us. God saved us. It's not a do-it-yourself job. We don't save ourselves. And Mike knew that. Got a sheet here with his funeral instructions on. It was easy. 
Is that the way all you law enforcement guys do? Just straightforward, get just the facts. Abide with me, John 11. And then his, here's his statement of what Jesus means to me. Jesus is my savior. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for my sins. I know I will be in heaven when I die. And there it is. That's what we need to know. He didn't wish, he didn't hope, he knew. Because the job is done by Jesus, who suffered and died and rose again so that we would live forever with him, so we could abide in his presence forever. And that's where we turn the corner to the fact that this abiding in life and death is not only undeserved, it's unending. Let's just imagine that Mike could have lived instead of 74 to 84 or 94 or even 100. And we could say he had a long life. But really, even 100 years in the span of eternity is but a drop in the bucket. Eternity means forever. No matter how good our health may be, no matter how physically fit we might be, no matter how good our genetic material is, sooner or later, one day, our heart is going to beat our last, we'll close our eyes, and unless the Lord returns first to get all of us who remain, we will die. And then it's eternity. And for the Christian, it's eternity with Jesus. And it's even better than that. It's eternity with Jesus in a glorified body, in fellowship and reunion and communion with all those we love who have left us in the faith. We have this idea, false idea, of eternity means we're going to float around somewhere up as happy ghosts in the sky. It's better than that. We get our bodies back, glorified. No more tears, no more illness, no more aging. Glorified, like our saviors, defying time and physics. It's better than we can imagine. And Jesus has won it all for us. That's what awaits us. That's why we ask the Lord to abide with us. It was a privilege to be Mike's pastor these last 16 years, and especially these last months on the final leg of his earthly journey. He knew this day was coming, sooner or later, but he had no fear of it because he knew what's on the other side. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. Death is not the end for the child of God. Death is the doorway to eternity, an unending, glorious life in the presence of Jesus. And finally, the end in this world came to him. But now we can only imagine the joys and the glory and the pain-free existence that he enjoys in the presence of Jesus. We pray that God will keep us likewise faithful as we follow his example, as by the power of the Holy Spirit we cling to our Savior, as we, every day of our life, no matter what the hardships or the adversities, look to the promises of Jesus, who said, I am the resurrection and the life. And in a few moments, we'll fit, sing the final three stanzas of that beloved hymn. And that final one really is a prayer that all of us can pray every night when we close our eyes as we rehearse for death. But then when our loved ones surround our bed as Mike's loved ones surrounded his, we can sing it and think of it again. 
Hold thou thy cross before my closing eyes. Shine through the gloom and point me to the skies. Heaven's morning breaks and earth's vain shadows flee. In life, in death, O Lord, abide with me. We pray it, and he hears it, and he does it. He's done it for Mike. He'll do it for us. Thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Please turn to the middle pages of your bulletin for the prayer of the church. Let us pray to the Lord, our God and Father, who raised Jesus from the dead. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together into one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your light and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection may die to sin and rise to newness of life, and so pass with him through the gate of death and the grave to our joyful resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant that all who have been nourished by the holy body and blood of your Son may be raised to immortality and incorruption to be seated with him at your heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give to the family of Mike and to all who mourn comfort in their grief and assure confidence in your loving care, that casting all their sorrow on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give courage and faith to the bereaved, that within the communion of your church, they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the assurance of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love who have departed in the faith, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and find comfort in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for Mike and for all the blessings you bestowed on him in this earthly life. Bring us at last to our heavenly home that with him we may see you face to face in the joys of paradise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks that by his death he destroyed the power of death, and by his resurrection he opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Strengthen us in the confidence that because he lives, we shall live also, and that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come will be able to separate us from your love, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Amen. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die.
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies, and whoever lives and believes in me will never die. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, our shepherd, you gather the lambs of your flock into the arms of your mercy and bring them home. Comfort us with a certain hope of the resurrection to everlasting life and a joyful reunion with those we love who have died in the faith. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing the final hymn. And the family invites you to a gathering at the Viking Club on 41st Street following the committal at National Cemetery. Let us go forth in peace.